Good evening and welcome to our public uh, information meeting about Pinellas County's Utilities Lift Station Replacement Project in North Reddington Beach. I'm Libby Bowling and I'm a public information specialist with Pinellas County. Before we get started uh, with tonight's meeting, I'd like to give you a quick overview of Zoom and the two different ways you can ask questions this evening. The first way is to type uh, your question into a Q&A window. The second is by clicking your, the raise your hand button to ask your question live. So let's go over each one of those. If you're on a computer or are using the Zoom app by phone, move your mouse or tap the screen and you'll see the menu below. The menu will go away when you're watching. And if you'd like the menu to come back, just move your mouse around or tap your phone again. Then click the Q&A window. A window will open up where you can type your question. After typing your question in the window, click the send button, uh, which is uh, illuminated by number two. You can close the window or move the window aside by clicking on the top and dragging it around. Questions uh, will be seen only by the moderators. If you've joined us by phone or would like to ask uh, a question live, use the raise your hand button. To raise your hand on the phone, press star nine. To raise your hand from the computer or the Zoom app, move your mouse to the bottom of the screen and the menu will appear. Then click the raise your hand icon. If you raise your hand, you can lower it by clicking the icon again. When you are called on to ask a question, you should see a message like this. If you dialed in, you may you may need to press star six to unmute yourself. If you accidentally click the wrong thing, you'll see a new mute, unmute option appear at the bottom left of the Zoom screen. Click the button, let me advance this. There you go, unmute, click the button um, and to um, resume asking your question. This only appears when the host is giving you the ability to speak. And as it, with any meeting, please keep your questions on topic and your comments brief so we can get to everyone. Now I'd like to introduce the moderator for this evening's meeting, Diana Jones. Thank you, Libby. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening for our first virtual public meeting to discuss the construction project to replace lift station 79 in North Reddington Beach. Uh, again, my name is Diane Jones and I'll be serving as your moderator for this meeting. During tonight's meeting, you will hear from representatives from both the Pinellas County Utilities Department and from the contractor on the project, Wharton Smith. They will go over the details of the construction project to replace lift station 79 with the goal being to ensure that you leave tonight knowing what the project entails, why it's necessary, and how you may be affected by the project. I'd like to take a minute to introduce our two presenters this evening. From Pinellas County Utilities Department, we have Ted Armstrong. Ted is the project manager on this project. You'll be also be hearing from Billy Logan with Wharton Smith. Billy is a construction project executive with Wharton Smith, and he will be providing oversight of the construction team throughout the project. Once Ted and Billy have made their presentations, we will take questions from the audience. As Libby mentioned, if you have a question, please post it in the Q&A section of this Zoom call. Or if you'd like to ask your question personally, you can click the raise hand button and we'll call on you once the presentations have been made. We will attempt to answer every question you have tonight. However, if for some reason we don't have time to answer all your questions or we don't know the answer right away, we'll make sure to get your contact information and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now it's time to hear from our presenters. 
First, we have Ted Armstrong from Pinellas County Utilities. And let me go ahead and share my screen and put up the presentation. Thank you, Diane, appreciate that. Good evening, everybody. As Diane mentioned, my name is Ted Armstrong. I work for Pinellas County Utilities Department. I am in the engineering division and I am the county's project manager for this project. As uh, Diane mentioned, I, uh, this meeting is to share information about the lift station replacement project so that you will have an understanding of what the project is all about. I will explain this on the next several slides. Our contractor, Wharton Smith, will follow me and describe some of the construction aspects that are associated with this project. We thought it'd be a good idea to have them participate in this information meeting. Now, this slide shows a couple of documents that we mailed out a week or two ago uh, to the residents that we thought would be mostly affected uh, by this project. Um, off to the right hand side of the screen, you can see uh, the street names uh, for the residents that we, we felt uh, fell into this category. Okay. Uh, the letter on the left hand of the screen, and I know you can't, you can't really see it, it's kind of small, but that's, that's the, the main letter that was mailed out. It provides information about uh, the project in general when it was starting, uh, had information about uh, this information meeting as well. The document that accompanied the uh, letter is shown on the center of this slide. And that's our project fact sheet. We also have this information on our website um, if you want to see it there as well. And I'll be talking about this over the next several slides as well. Next slide, please. So what is the purpose of the lift slash pump station? Now, we, um, I wanna state first before I get started, Sometimes we call this a lift station, and sometimes we call this a pump station. But for the purposes of this meeting and for this project, they're the same thing. So if you hear both, it's, it's for the same structure, and I, I don't want anybody to be confused. Okay, what is the lift station? A lot of folks don't know what the lift station is, but the lift station is a very important component of the sanitary sewer system that's located in the neighborhood. It is the lowest point where the sanitary sewer flows before it is moved uh, to another location. For instance, uh, the, sanitary, the, sanitary, excuse me, the sanitary sewer will leave the, your residences, your businesses, and will travel downhill through the pipe system within the street under the ground and will end up in the part of the lift station called the wet well. Now, our new lift station has a wet well that's gonna be 25 feet deep below the ground, and it's a concrete structure. Okay, now that, liquid from the sanitary sewer will, will be pumped back up into another pipe system and it will be discharged away from the lift station. In this case, it's going to be discharged towards the south into uh, the sanitary sewer collection and transmission system that exists, I'm going to say downstream of, uh, of our neighborhood. Now, our lift station will send this to those other systems and they will eventually make their way to our wastewater treatment plant that is located in St. Petersburg off of 54th Avenue. Now that's called the South Cross Bayou Advanced Water Reclamation Facility. Now our, our lift station takes sanitary sewer flows from both towns of Reddington Shores and from North Reddington Beach. What else is included with the, with the new lift station? The lift station will also include a backup generator. So this provides the backup power uh, to operate the lift station if the power grid goes out, if the Duke Energy has an issue somewhere. Uh, we have designed and will be constructed a backup generator to, to keep the system in operation or the lift station in operation. There will also be an odor control system. Work will occur within 173rd Avenue. Uh, we will talk about this a little later uh, in the presentation as well. And I wanted to talk about it now because we do have some gravity sanitary sewers that are located uh, along 173rd Avenue, not a long stretch, just, just the, a short portion um, that are very deep and they'll need to be 
removed and relocated to the location of the new lift station. And, and we'll see, we'll see where, the, where that is located here on the next few slides. Um, the project duration is 11 months long. And that's a very reasonable time period for a project of this nature. And the cost of the project is $4.3 million. Uh, this is from the existing county sewer enterprise funds. So there's not gonna be any rate increases or anything of that nature associated with this project. Next slide, please. All right, this slide has a photo and it's intended to show uh, the existing site conditions. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, and is recognizable by anybody watching this. Um, on the right hand side of the photo is the town of North Reddington Beach's town hall. Uh, we're pointing towards that on the right hand side. Uh, if you kind of move over towards the left, you will see the uh, parking lot for the town hall. And then a little bit further over to the left on the photo, you will see the town's existing maintenance building. Now, just to the right, we drew in a red square. That red square is the location of the existing lift station. So that is currently this lowest point of the sanitary sewer system uh, in this area that I was talking about in the, in the previous slide. Now, just to the left is a red circle, although it's not existing like the other items that I just mentioned, I drew it on here for reference. Uh, that's the location for the new lift station. So in summary, if you ask what's going on with the project, the square, the red square is the existing lift station and it's gonna be replaced by the red circle, which is a new lift station, okay? So there, there's the new lift station has to be built and then it's the circle and then the, the red square, that lift station will be, will be removed from service. That's pretty much summarizes the replacement that you see in the title of the project. Next slide, please. Well, this slide shows uh, a depiction of what you might see after the lift station is constructed. And following the lift station is, is the rescue station. Now, the rescue station is a separate project. Um, it will, it's currently in design and it has not been completed yet. It's managed by a different department in the county than the, than the engineering division. Um, we did use this shape from the current drawings and, and uh, overlaid it onto the photo from the previous picture. So you will see uh, that the location of the rescue station is basically the, right on top of where the existing maintenance building is. So what that means is the existing maintenance building will, will, will be removed, it'll be demolished. And it will be demolished during this project for the lift station. So you will see that, you'll see the demolition of this building. Um, it, has, it has to be removed before the rescue station can be built. Why are we doing this project? Well, the, the main answer is the existing lift station and its equipment, which are pumps, electrical equipment, things of that nature, are aging. They're nearing the end of their useful life and, and they need to be replaced. How will this project affect you? Well, the good news is the sanitary sewer um, system will not be affected by this project. There should be no, no interruptions of service. Um, we're not expecting any shutdowns of service during the construction project. That was part of the, of the requirements for the, for the project, uh, for the contractor. There will be a road closure. Once I mentioned that once before, uh, Warren Smith is gonna talk about that on 173rd Avenue adjacent to the job site. And there'll be one on 174th Avenue in the town of Reddington Shores as well. Um, as I mentioned, Wharton Smith will be providing more information on that coming up. The construction will be visible. So if you walk by, jog by, bike by, drive by, you'll, uh, you'll see the ongoing construction and, you know, for the next 11 months. At the end of the project, there will be a fence and a gate along the 173rd Avenue side of the lift station. Uh, there will be, once the rescue station is constructed, that'll be on the 
on the front side of the list station on the east side. So what you will, what you will see is basically the top of the electrical boxes that are um, located at, um, adjacent to the list station, but in the backyard, and you'll, you'll see the top of the generator, several feet of the top of the generator. And that's not much different than, than what the conditions are today. And that's what you'll see after this project is over. And that concludes my, my uh, informational slides about the project. Um, at this time, uh, Wharton Smith will join the presentation and we'll be discussing their company information and more of what might be expected during the construction phase. Thank you, Ted. As Diane mentioned earlier, my name is Billy Logan and I work for Wharton Smith. Uh, Wharton Smith was founded in 1984 with a primary focus on water and wastewater. Our corporate office is located in Sanford. Since 84, we have opened up nine other offices in the Southeast, ranging from North Carolina all the way to Texas. Um, just so everybody knows, I work out of the Tampa office, so I am not far. Um, we perform design bid build, design build, and construction manager at risk. Um, since 84, we have uh, ventured off into several other sectors. Is Probably about half our business is water wastewater. The other half are the other sectors listed in bullet number four. The point I wanna drive home is we've been doing this type of work for a long time. I started with the company in 2003 and we know how to work within communities and near communities and try to minimize the impacts to the neighborhoods. Uh, one project that was very successful for us right down the road that was completed with minimal impacts to the community was Isle of Capri, where we upgraded Pinellas County's pump station there. Next slide, please. So safety is key for our business. The picture on the right is the, man, uh, is the minimum protective personal equipment that we will be required for our employees and subcontractors. This will include hard hats, safety glasses, high vis vests, long pants, boots, and on occasion, gloves and ear protection as needed. The dash red lines that you see encompassing our work zone is the fencing that we are gonna put up. It's important that we put up this security fencing because there are hazards within our construction sites and only authorized personnel are to enter those gates. And the gates that I mentioned, there will be one on the 174th and one on 173rd. Our work hours will be Monday through Saturday, eight to six, but mostly Monday through Friday. On occasions, we will need to work Saturdays. Now, Ted touched base a little bit about not impacting the sewer service provided to you guys. This is maintained by us doing occasional night work because we'll have to make key tie-ins and bypasses during low flows. Next slide, please. So as Ted mentioned, we will have a couple road closures. The first one I wanted to talk about is on 174th Avenue. The picture on the right is the preliminary maintenance of traffic plan that Bob's Barricades has put together. Everybody kind of knows what a maintenance of traffic plan is, but that's basically just the signage and the detours that will be put up prior uh, to the construction activities. Just so everybody knows, this will be uh, placed into service one week prior to shutting down the road so the community can get used to the detours. The picture on the left, the area that you see hatched in red with red squiggly lines going diagonal, that is actually where we will be cutting into the road and having a road closure for our bypass. Now this will be two separate road closures, approximately two weeks each, and will start sometime around May, June of 2022. Next slide, please. The next road closure on 173rd, same, same situations before the picture on the right is the preliminary plan for all the signage and detours. Um, this road closure is approximately three months. Same thing, the red area outlines uh, what we will be disturbing. Uh, this is three months because there's a lot of piping in the ground existing and the new piping that we got to put in for the new pipe pump station that Ted described. So. A couple of things I wanted to mention, this will start approximately around October of this year. And also our security fencing will be relocated to encompass this, this 
road closure to ensure that there's no access from the community uh, because it will have some hazards. There will be some deep excavations and we do not want anybody coming into that work zone. Next slide, please. So here, I just kind of wanted to touch base a little bit of what you could expect on the demolition. The picture on the right is our contract drawing. We kind of thought it would be better for the community to see an aerial. Uh, we've highlighted in yellow the areas that will be demolished. Uh, the first building that will be demolished is the one on the north side that looks like a house. Uh, that is currently uh, Reddington Shores, basically a storage building um, that has been all the items in there have been removed and this building will be demolished first. As I move south, the building where Reddington Beach stored uh, miscellaneous maintenance equipment, that will be demoed. And on the very south of this building is what houses the electrical equipment for the pump station. This electrical equipment is currently being relocated into a temporary structure. That way we can still operate the existing lift station while we're constructing the new lift station. Next slide. So a couple things, um, you know, it's important for us when we're working within a community that we're good neighbors. Uh, nobody likes disturbances, you know, when you live in a neighborhood. So there's a few things, extra precautions that we take. Uh, when I mentioned the security fencing, we will also be installing a windscreen. This will help kind of minimize some of the eyesores you might witness when uh, being near a construction site. Also, the use of water sprayers to minimize dust will be used. What happens is when we disturb a grass area and remove that grass, uh, typically what will happen is the dirt and a heavy wind day will lift that dirt and spread it for hundreds of feet. So what we will do is we'll spray those areas on the windy days. Also, there's a lot of demolition on this project and there will be concrete cutting per OSHA. We will be using concrete cutting tools with a built-in vacuum dust collector. Now, this will not eliminate all dust, but it will help. Uh, the last thing I kind of wanted to bring up that we are um, doing is we will have bypass pumps set up, but we do order these bypass pumps with sound attenuated enclosures. Uh, this helps with uh, the noise and uh, lessens the impact to the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ted and Billy. That was very useful information. And now I'd like to open up this meeting to any questions. As we mentioned at the beginning of this call, if you have a question or comment, please share it in the Q&A section of this Zoom call. Or if you'd like to ask your question personally, go ahead and hit the raise hand button. Now, it looks like we do have a question um, that I'm gonna go ahead and ask. The question is, how long will the detours be in place? And Billy, do you wanna try and, and answer that question? Yes, the, the one on the north side, there will be two separate enclosures uh, each, or yeah, closures, two separate closures. Each will be approximately two weeks, most likely less, but it will be two separate closures for two weeks. The one on the south side will be approximately three months. Hopefully that answers the question. At this time, are there any other questions? If anybody has any questions, please raise your hand or um, put it in the Q&A section. Oh, looks like we might have another question. Hold on. Nope, that one was already answered. It doesn't look like we have any other questions. So let I me... do see a hand raised, so. Oh, do you? Yeah, there's a. Looks oh, like I'm sorry, she... I apologize. Yes, it does. Let me. Uh, Libby, do you wanna go ahead and, and... oh, it looks like now Sharon. Um, if you take yourself off, off mute, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, when we first moved 
to our house in North Reddington Beach. We never smelled anything, you know, in terms of obsession. And then I would say, we don't smell anything right now. I don't know if anything new has been done, but for I would say about five years, uh, there's been from time to time kind of a, a pungent smell come from there. I'm just wondering, will new station uh, avoid this? Ted, do you want to try and answer that question? Sure, sure. The uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure what what was going on five years ago, but um, uh, part of our design and part of what will be installed is is an odor control unit. Okay, we're we're installing those on many of our stations and other locations throughout the county. So. Um, we weren't sure if there would be uh, an issue, but just to make sure, we went ahead and, and, and have have a unit installed in this project. So that shouldn't be an okay, issue. Great. That's uh, terrific. Thanks very much. You're welcome. And Ted, um, one of the questions that just came up was, how does that odor control unit work? Do you have knowledge on that? I will probably have to find out the details to get back on that. I, I don't want to speculate. Um, it's, it's not my area of expertise. Okay. But, um, it's, 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 uh, it's got, a, it's a filtering process. And if uh, you want to send me uh, some information, I'll be more than happy to get you a little more information on that. Okay. So the person who asked the question asked anonymously, which is fine. Um, and the next slide I'm going to show does have ways to contact us. So if you'd like more specific information about that, you can just email Ted directly and his email will be up there in just a moment. Um, we do have another question. Uh, what is the timetable for the different aspects of the project? Billy, maybe you could give just a quick overview of the timetable. Um. I'm not sure what is meant by timetable, so I'll, I'll, I'll do the best I can. You know, I can say the first phase, which is four to six weeks, is relocate the electrical equipment uh, out of the building. Uh, I believe the buildings will be demoed within a few weeks. It'll take anywhere between four to six months to install the new uh, pump station and piping and manholes that are included. Uh, we'll spend Hell, you may correct me, but she's online too. But I want to say about eight to 12 weeks for that road closure and to do the last part of the piping for the road closure that we have. That's about three months. And then startup and testing will be about four weeks because it's IO checkout. Um, you know, we have to be on bypass, test the new equipment. So the overall duration of the project's 11 months. So I don't know, I kind of tried to touch on everything throughout the construction project, but hopefully that answered the question. Great, thank you. And if it didn't answer your question, um, please let us know. Uh, it looks like another question's come in. And again, this is probably for you, Billy. Uh, what kind of noise will we experience? Obviously, you know, the, depending on what you're doing, it'll be different. Demolition will definitely sound different than, than others, but what, what type of noise will we experience and will it be loud? And will it be at night? Yeah, so we will minimize uh, large amounts of noise at night. You know, very few night interruptions, only on key tie-ins. Now you will have, like I said, when we're in bypass, uh, you will have bypass pumps running, but they're in sound attenuated panels uh, or enclosures. So that should be minimal, but it's gonna be typical. Demolition, I, I would say it's probably the worst um, but I wouldn't say it's overbearing. It's not like, you know, if you've ever been around when they're uh, installing piles for a new bridge and that constant hammering that you would experience, it's not like that. But once we get out of demolition, it's gonna be your standard excavator, you know, 90, 90,000 pound machine running uh, continuously for eight to 10 hours. So um, again, I don't think it's overbearing. But, you know, please reach out to us if there's something, you know, please reach out to Ted if it's out of the norm. But hopefully that answers the question. Okay, another question's come in. Um, this might be for Ted. I'm not sure. 
Um, how do you stop the flow of the sewer system? Now we're doing this so that we don't have to stop the flow, I believe, but I will let Ted answer that question. Or, oh, Billy's raising his hand, it's a Billy question. Go ahead, Billy. Ted, do you want me to take this one? Yeah, I was, I was wondering, but I, you raised your hand, so I think I understand what the question is. It's probably how do you stop it to do the tie-ins and such. Yeah, so that's, a, you know, the first uh, road closure I described, we set up some bypass pumping, right? So what we will do is we'll put a blow-up plug in the manhole, you know, to stop any flow on uh, key tie-ins. So it'll stop the flow going to the pump station, but we will have bypass pumps pumping from that manhole and sending it to the pump station. So we have four separate occasions that we have to do this. And that's how we minimize the impacts to the community because we're able to keep it live, even though we're shutting down certain portions of the pipeline. So and the residents should not have any interruptions, won't even know the project is taking place. That's correct. When it comes to their everyday showers, toilet usage, whatever they need, they will not be impacted. That's wonderful. Well, these have been some fantastic questions. And um, does anyone else have any other questions? Am I, do I, am I missing anything, anyone? And I'm going to share my screen one more time. And to the person that was asking all those excellent questions, if you want to have, if you'd like to talk to Ted one-on-one, -on -one, um, I'm sure he wouldn't mind you picking his brain a little bit. Um, this is, he's the expert on this. So um, definitely you, you, you can contact him directly. But if anyone has any uh, questions, would like more information, there's several ways that you can get that information. Um, first, you can visit our website which is listed here. This website is for all our, our main our utility projects. And we will update this website um, on a regular basis. This is where you will find out when detours are occurring, um, the what's going on with the project, the latest updates. So this is a really good uh, website to bookmark. You can also sign up for project alerts uh, by texting NRB lift STA to 888-777 if you'd like to receive text messages. This is a system that Pinellas County has in place right now. So that's another way to get some project updates and alerts. And if you are familiar with Nextdoor, if you currently use Nextdoor in the Reddington Beach area, uh, we will be posting update project updates on there as well. And finally, if you have any questions at any time, please call our Pinellas County Utilities Customer Service. Uh, that number is there on the screen. Or you can email Ted directly, Ted Armstrong. His email is there on the screen as well. Um, he is the project manager and um, would be the best person to answer your questions. So with that, I'm going to end this public meeting. Um, thank you all so much for coming and being a part of this project. And if we can help in any way in the future, uh, if you have any questions, just please let us know. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening.